Yep, let's get original crew, man. We're back. Got new Mr. Ballin. We got Yorkshires. Walking Dead. Actually, kill people. We have to. Ooh, would you like if, if they came out and said they want yep. to do another Walking yep. Dead? Would you play? Mm -hmm. Go show me your Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know you would. Because you can't be doing on command. You would have been. Oh, all right, all right, let me oh, get the curtain. Because I Let's always. See. Because I always like. You supposed to be able to get I wouldn't even be scared of that. I would like some wrong. Yeah, you would when you no, when I, I get the makeup and everything. I would be scared. <laughs> Act. No, no, I can act. No, after you can't be serious. I, I can you, act. You, need to, you actually have to get in character. Okay. And action. I exactly. can't do it right now. Because exactly. you're watching Let's me. Let's go, man. Before we get into it, man. Me. Make sure y'all check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want the first part, all you got to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video. I can get it with a thumbs up. I'm telling you, you cannot act. Yes, I could. I could. No, because you can't you can't get serious. It's because you're watching me, you like. Everybody's gonna be that watching you. I don't know them people, but you see her watching me. Even like, I might be I might be on set and be like, hit that beat. 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 Hit that Man, you gotta go. They're gonna have to cut your you ass off. I'm like, dang. Let's go, man. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Today's story is a good old fashioned scary story right. that you might tell around a campfire. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please super glue 50 harmonicas to the front of the like button's car right before they leave for work. Also, please subscribe to our- Right before they- Oh, so you want them to be late for work today? How would they make them late? Because they might be pissed off and try to take them off. Or they just suffer through and get the that. <laughs> you gonna hear me coming. Mm, get out of my way. <laughs> That's pretty dope. Oh, don't miss my all That's notifications annoying. so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. On the afternoon of Sunday, February 25th, 1855, a 48-year-old woman named Hannah Rallinson, along with her husband and a group of her friends, walked quickly down a road in Sheffield, England. As they walked, the entire group was totally silent because they were terrified of what was going to happen next. Behind Hannah and her friends on this road was actually another slightly larger group of people that were keeping pace with Hannah and her friends. They were actually going to the same place as them, except this second group had no intention of going inside that building. They were just there to see what happened. Now, Hannah and her friends were totally offended and annoyed by this group that was following them, but they knew there was nothing they could do, and so they just kept on walking in silence. And as Hannah walked in silence, she couldn't help but think to herself, you know, how in the world did I get into this position? At the time, Sheffield, England was a big industrial city with lots of metalworking factories all over the place, and so loads of people at the time were coming to Sheffield to work in those factories, all these tents. And as the population increased in sorry y'all um i do apologize i'm trying to increase the time we're coming to sheffield to work in those factories and as the population increased in sheffield the city began building all these tenement apartments which are kind of like these low quality cramped interconnected apartments that are basically cheap and easy to make and house lots and lots of people Hannah and her husband lived in one of these tenement apartments and they worked in one of the metalworking factories, which meant their lives were pretty rough and difficult. 
But recently, their lives had become even more challenging when their oldest son had died in a coal mining accident. And this totally devastated the parents, but Hannah definitely took it the worst. In her grief, Hannah became very antisocial and began just going to the factory and doing backbreaking labor all day and then came straight home. She would go to a room by herself and she would just sit there all night and pray and try to communicate with her dead son. Now, at first, Hannah's husband basically did the same thing as Hannah. He put all of his energy and his time and his focus on work, even though it was totally backbreaking and miserable, mainly because it was a distraction from this terrible grief he was dealing with. But after several weeks and months went by, you know, Hannah's husband did begin to kind of get back to normal and began to move forward with his life. But he could see Hannah was not doing that. Hannah was totally depressed and isolated. And so he eventually encouraged her to start going back to church and start spending more time with people there, make some new friends, and hopefully being around some people will help you cope with this tragedy. And Hannah had actually taken her husband's advice. She began going back to church. She made a bunch of new friends. She rekindled old relationships. And before long, she was getting that support and it was helping her kind of move through this grieving process. But ironically, it was this new church support group that had thrust Hannah into a new horrible situation, one that was playing out on the streets of Sheffield, England, as Hannah, her husband, and her church friends speed walked down the road with this big group following behind them. And so in this group of people with Hannah was obviously her husband, as well as her closest friend from church, whose name was Harriet Ward. And then also there was three members of the Favell family. There was Mr. and Mrs. Favell, as well as Mrs. Favell's sister. And all of them were headed to the tenement apartment on Campo Lane, where Harriet Ward and the Favell family lived together. Hannah and her group, and the second group that was following them, all came from the same place. They all went to the same church, and that day, for the previous two hours before they all took to the streets here, they had been having this really heated argument about what to do about Harriet and the Favell family's basement. Or, more specifically, what to do about what was in their basement. Some parishioners said that Harriet and the Favell family were just totally making up what was going on in their basement. But other parishioners believed them and said that that basement was so dangerous, nobody should go in it. In fact, we should just board up that basement permanently, or we should just level the entire tenement apartment building. And when that idea began gaining some traction, that lots of people in the church began saying, yeah, let's block off the basement or knock the apartment down, the Favell family and Harriet, who lived in this apartment building and did not want to, you know, permanently block off segments of it or knock it down, they got so angry that they just stood up and left. And at this point, Hannah and her husband just got up and left with their friends. Now, once they got outside, they didn't really have a plan, but they felt strongly that they just needed to get to the Campo Lane Tenement Apartment Building and at a minimum, just be in there to prevent other people from showing up and doing something to the apartment, like trying to knock it down or do something to the basement. And so Hannah and her group began speed walking to the apartment and this gaggle of other churchgoers who were part of this argument just kind of naturally came outside and followed them. And then when Hannah and her friends reached the apartment building, on Campo Lane, they went inside and shut and locked the door behind them. And for a moment, Hannah and the five other people she was with, they just stood there in silence, not really sure what to do next. But eventually, one of them said, we gotta do something about the basement, because if we don't, the people outside will. Hannah walked over to the front of the apartment where there was a big window that looked out to the street. And when she looked out there, she saw the big group of people that had followed them were all kind of gathering around the small window that looked down into the Campo Lane tenement apartment basement. It was like all these people were jockeying for position to get the best look. Hannah shut the- What you think going on? What's in the basement? I'm Cause, sitting cause here like, you got, you what's got... in the basement? Harriet and the, I, I didn't write down the family. I just said the three others. But yeah. The, the, I, fam, the other family. I can't remember. And then you got Hannah and her husband. So, and they all from the same church. Yes. Also, I, I pay attention to what a lot of stuff. You got to pay attention to some of the fine details. Don't forget, Hannah's son died in the, in the coal mine. Hannah was also trying to speak to him from the dead. The title is The Walking Dead. Walking Dead actually keep. Ooh. 
Okay. So, but, I but mean, I, I that was could be a reach with the title. It could be a reach. I was kind of going there. I was like, maybe something, someone, some type of entity, whatever. But the this part, that's what kind of yeah, yeah, gets me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. or is it so, somebody that's supposed to be dead but actually not dead? Yeah, it's, it's I, doing something. You get what I'm saying? They but it thought. has to be somebody. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Okay, I don't know. It was like all these people were jockeying for position to get the best look. Hannah shut the blind in frustration and then walked back over to the group. And then after a few minutes, Mr. Favell said, you know, guys, it's only going to be daylight for a few more hours. If we're going to do something in the basement, we have to get down there before the daylight is gone. We okay. can't be down there in the dark. The group nodded because they understood why. They definitely did not want to be down there in the dark. And then Mr. Favell looked over at Hannah's husband and he kind of gestured like, why don't we, the two of us, go down there together? And Hannah's husband, even though he did not want to go down there, he just nodded and said, okay, let's go. Moments later, Hannah, Harriet, and the two Favell women watched as the two men opened up the basement door, turned around and looked at the women, and then they slowly began descending the stairs. And then after a couple of minutes- Why, why do men always gotta be sitting down? <laughs> Not even just that, why you gotta volunteer me? You, you, you go by yourself. Don't volunteer hey, me. Just you the me. man. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to stay alive. <laughs> I don't wanna go around and looked at the women and then they slowly began descending the stairs and then after a couple of minutes the only sound coming out of the basement was the sound of these two men using big metal tools to attempt to break up the stone floor in the basement for the next two hours mr favell and hannah's husband continued to smash up the floor in the basement but every time they removed a big piece of stone all they'd find was dirt underneath there was nothing else Meanwhile, outside, the crowd looking in that window into the basement was only getting bigger and bigger. It was no longer just other members of their church. It was now just random people who saw this big group and walked over to see what was going on. And Hannah, who was at that window looking out into the street, she was seeing this group growing and seeing how rowdy they were getting, and it was starting to make her really nervous. But the nerves she felt about the crowd were nothing compared to the nerves she felt about her husband and Mr. Favell still being in that basement now that the sun was about to set. She did not want them down there in the dark. And finally, when the sun did set and the two men still had not come up, Hannah just rushed over to the basement and yelled for them to stop what they were doing and get up here. And the two men did as she asked. They dropped their tools and came upstairs looking totally dejected. Okay. You know, they had not found the thing they were looking for down there, which meant they had failed. But Hannah and her friends were hoping that now that it was dark outside and the people outside could no longer actually see into the basement because it was too dark, that maybe the crowd would disperse. But as Hannah, her husband, Harriet, and the Favells sat down to have some dinner in the apartment, they looked outside periodically and they saw the crowd was not going away. If anything, the crowd was still continuing to get bigger. Now, you gotta remember, this is Sheffield, England in the 1800s. This was a tough place to live. Everybody's working at these factories, doing this awful work seven days a week for very little money, and there's virtually no entertainment anywhere. It's basically just work, work, work until you die. And so when people in Sheffield saw this big group of people at night standing around this apartment no. window, it was exciting, yeah. and that was pretty rare in their lives. And so they were not about to leave and go home because their lives at home were terrible. And so yeah. by about midnight, there was this huge crowd right outside of the Campo Lane apartment. And it meant that, you know, Hannah and her husband really couldn't leave to go back to their apartment. They were kind of trapped because of this crowd. Also, the crowd was really starting to get rowdy and the Favell family were starting to get worried that a fight would break out near the basement window and then maybe the window would break and then these people would storm into their apartment and maybe rob them. I mean, they didn't know. And so Mrs. Favell came up with this plan to try to get the crowd to leave them alone. And so she ran over to one of the biggest windows on the first floor and she pulled down the curtain rod and the curtain attached to it and she handed it to her sister and said, go down in the basement and use this curtain rod and curtain to block out the one window. This If you already told the men not to, that don't make sense then. Again, stop volunteering me. You go. You they go are, with the rod it, it, it is people volunteering Stop people. volunteering me to do stuff. But, but like... If y'all told the men, hey, stop, we can't be in the basement at nighttime, 
Why the hell make, we gonna go put a curtain mean? down there? That don't make sense. We gonna wait till the morning. Okay. Yeah. Get some sunlight. But has to look into the basement. If they can't see into the basement, then they'll likely just leave. But Mrs. Favell's sister, after being handed this curtain rod, she's like, I don't want to go in the basement. It's right. the middle of the night. I'm not going down there. And over the next couple of minutes, the, the entire the group just kind of bickered about who should be the one to go down into the basement to cover up this window. And nobody wanted to do who it. Else is he? And finally, Hannah, who she's lost her son recently, you know, she just wants to go home at this point, but oh. she can't because of the stupid group. She finally just snaps and says, you know what? I'll do it. And so she snatches the curtain rod and just walks right over to the basement door. She opens it up and begins descending the stairs before anybody else could stop her. And as she did, her husband and Harriet and the Favell family, they all crowded around the top of the basement stairs, looking down, kind of waiting to see what would happen. And so they all heard as Hannah turned the corner and walked over to that window and they could hear her kind of messing around with the curtain as she put it in place. And then even though they could not see her down there because the basement's totally dark, they can't see the window, they heard Hannah call out that she was done. She had put the curtain up, okay. it's blocked, and now she was gonna come back upstairs. But after she yelled to them that she was coming back up, it went completely silent in the basement. And for like five, six, seven seconds, all the people at the top of the stairs are waiting anxiously for Hannah to turn the corner and come up the stairs to safety. But then this tense silence was broken with a horrible scream coming out of the basement. It was Hannah. And then silence again. And at this point, Hannah's husband, he's like, oh my God, something's happened. And he charges down the stairs and he looks over and he sees Hannah is lying on the ground motionless. There's nothing else in the basement. It's just Don't his wife and his covered up window. And so he runs over, he scoops her up and he runs her back upstairs and he lays her on the ground right outside of the basement door. And then he began to shake her to try to wake her up, but she wasn't waking up. However, it was clear she was still breathing, and so Harriet ran and got a wet towel, and she came back and she kneeled down next to Hannah, and she placed the towel on Hannah's forehead, hoping this wet towel would revive Hannah. But as Harriet is kneeling there, so she's looking at Hannah's body, and the basement door, which is open, is right past Hannah's body, Harriet happened to look up, and so now she's looking into the doorway that leads down into the basement, and her eyes went wide and she screamed and then she passed out. The big controversy over this basement began several weeks earlier at the beginning of February when Harriet and the Favell family began hearing all these strange sounds coming out of the basement. Now, initially, they had totally written off these sounds as being, you know, strange creaking and cracking sounds that were just the product of a poorly constructed building with lots of people inside of it. But the noises they were hearing from the basement only got louder and louder and more intense, and they were especially bad at night. And so basically, Harriet and the Favell family were so scared to go down there that they just stopped, especially at night. Sometimes they'd go during the day, but at night it was like, no one's going down there. We don't know what's going on, but I'm not going down there. And then on February 24th, so this is one day before all this craziness happened where, you know, Hannah and her friends get followed to the apartment and then Hannah goes down and she passes out and then Harriet passes out. So one day before that, Harriet swore she saw a ghost in the basement. She saw this old woman wearing a white gown kind of moving around in the basement. And the whole time Harriet said this woman, this ghost woman was pointing at one particular spot on the ground in the basement. <laughs> and then the same night that Harriet sees this ghost in the basement, Harriet has a dream. And in her dream, she sees this ghost. And again, this ghost is in that basement and it's pointing at the spot on the basement floor, except in Harriet's dream, this ghost woman speaks to Harriet and says that she was murdered and her gold was stolen from her and buried in the basement right there. And it was- That's what these motherfuckers want. They want to get the gold. Yeah, which when um he had said that, I think Harriet or Hannah, whichever one, was like scared. I think Harriet that people will come in and rob them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's something. It has to be oh, some type of like definitely. fortune. Yeah. That's because y'all done went out here and told the church and the church like, and the church like, oh, there's some money in there. They let go a piece get of it. That too. And then now y'all done told the whole the whole town. And if y'all don't go get that money, we gonna come in there and get it. And since nothing exciting goes on, they have nothing but time to. 
Like, come on now. That's lame as it That's is. That's crazy. This apparent ghost in the Campo Lane basement that was the center of that two hour long argument at the church the following day, which ultimately prompted Hannah, her husband, Harriet, the Favell family to get up and storm out to go protect the Campo Lane apartment. And then also the secondary group followed right after them, really just to see if they were going to go confront the ghost, because a lot of people thought that's what they're going to go do. And that is basically what Hannah, her husband and her friends ended up doing. They decided the two men would go down into the basement and attempt to dig up the floor in hopes that they might find this gold that was stolen from this murdered woman and buried in the basement. But they obviously did not find the gold, which ultimately led to Hannah going down and passing out, and then Harriet also passing out. Hannah and Harriet would wake up after passing out. Okay. And when they woke up, they would tell these terrifying stories about what they saw. Hannah said she went down the stairs, she went over to the window where all the crowd was looking in, and she managed to get this curtain up, and then she yelled upstairs to her husband and her friends that she was coming back up. But when Hannah actually turned around to go to the stairs, she realized the ghost was in the basement with her. There was this old woman wearing a white gown standing between Hannah and the stairs. She was blocking her way. And this woman was staring at Hannah really intently. And then Hannah screamed and this ghost charged at Hannah and basically went through her body. And it was at that point that Hannah passed out onto the ground. Mm. As for Harriet, when she came to, her story was even more terrifying. Mm. Harriet said after she placed that wet towel on Hannah's head, she looked up and she saw the woman in white walking up the stairs, staring directly at Harriet. And Harriet, you know, she froze and kind of leaned back and just stared at this woman. And the woman, she came right to the top of the stairs, she stopped in the doorway, and then she opened up her mouth grotesquely wide and just continued to stare directly at Harriet. And then with slow, trembling hands, the woman began taking off her nightgown, which eventually fell to the ground. And Harriet saw this woman was covered in cuts and gashes all over her chest and neck. And then Harriet let out a scream and she passed out too. Mm. Not long after Hannah and Harriet both came to and told their horrible stories, the police arrived outside and dispersed the big crowd, which meant Hannah and her husband could finally leave and go back to their own apartment. Yes. And they would. Shit, I'm gone, bro. <laughs> that's that's y'all problem. Y'all deal with it. Psh. Holla at me when uh, y'all see me out in the streets. <laughs> that's y'all <Ciao. y> <laughs> home. You know what I'm saying? I feel that is you, but um, your home. I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's what yeah, you I... decide to lay your head. <laughs> but you finna say what? No, I'm gonna say I feel you. I feel you. No, no, don't get me caught up in your mess. The fuck? No. Which meant Hannah and her husband could finally leave and go back to their own apartment. And they would. But just 12 hours later, Hannah would die. <gasps> the Sheffield coroner held an inquest into Hannah's death but he could find no scientific wow. explanation for why Hannah actually died. And so on her death certificate, it basically says she died of fright. She was literally scared to death. Wow. Following Hannah's very bizarre and basically unexplained death, Harriet, who would survive, okay. and the Favell family, they just moved out. They could not stand to be Dang. at that apartment any longer. And then also many more people who lived inside of this tenement apartment building on Campbell Lane, they also moved out because again, it was just too terrifying to be near this basement. Mm -hmm. To this day, we still don't have a better explanation for what happened to Hannah. She was in good health, all things considered, when she died. And so really this didn't make any sense. And so this case still is one of the only in recorded history where somebody apparently died just from getting scared. Damn. Late one night. That's one of the craziest stories we've ever heard, bro. Man, me being a good friend. Went over there and got myself caught up in some bull crap, and now I'm and gone. And now I'm gone. Man. Hey, sometimes, hey, you just bro. gotta, you gotta say, nah, you go handle this yourself, big dog, and I'm, I'm gonna head, head out. I would head, man. Yo, this is your house. Why are you? And my thing is, and I'm also thinking, I don't even understand why you would even want someone to go down there knowing that you're scared, knowing that at nighttime it gets worse, 
or whatever the case would be. True, a true. curtain wouldn't go like if they broke the window, the window was gonna be broke regardless. Like they would have found the way in if they really wanted to get in. And then that so, would have been they, that would have been for, up for them to deal with. You know what I'm saying? They chose, you know, but yeah. I wouldn't have sent any of my like you know friends, friends who here or loved help ones me. or like like no. They here to help uh, you. They that's no. Especially when you don't really know what you're dealing with for real. For true. Real. You know what I'm saying? That's so, the biggest thing. You don't know what you're dealing with. You having dreams. Even if you feel like it, like if you didn't think it was like a spirit, you feel like it was an actual real person. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like you still like why would you send any and anybody down there? Like, like you no. don't do that. Like that you, is crazy. You send them to like whatever it could be down there. You and now Hannah gone, husband without like husband without, and y'all just moved out. And you and move and, on with y'all life. He just lost his son. So he lost his. He done lost his wife. He done lost his. Like, come on now. Because I, I, I will say I do believe she died from just fright. Mm -hmm. Uh, because what else could it be? You know. And she was in like you know good health. Yeah. And it was just this situation, and literally twelve hours later, after this encounter happened. Yeah, because her heart, her heart still. What could it be? She could have kept dreaming about it, thinking about it, everything. Everything. She could have just been that afraid and just was like, yo, I don't know how, like, and it could have kept being on her mind and her heart just couldn't take it anymore and, and fail. You know what I'm saying? But I'm even thinking about that because if it was uh, like a heart attack, then it, they still would have been able to. And it might not have been a heart attack, it's just a heart failure, just a heart stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I'm just trying to put. I'm just trying to put some sense around the yeah, nonsense. It's just crazy. Cause it's, just it's unfortunate. Yeah. Like and super sad that I'm gone because. Some and y'all still didn't problem. find nothing. Somebody else's problem. I'm gone because of somebody else's problem. Cause Hannah and her husband didn't live there. I guess Harriet lived there because Harriet had yeah, the dream. Yeah, Harriet. But she so she lived with the family. It was the family. All other that was there. Well, I guess. Well, yeah. Or she just stayed in the building as well. I, I didn't really understand that part. But anyway, regardless of the fact who stayed there, we know Hannah and them. They didn't stay there. Hannah, her husband. Her, then. Hannah and her husband. And then you want to tell him come down and say, no, go dig your own hole. Go ahead, dig your burial ground, man, bro. That's. Oh no, that's sad. And to be honest, the ghost or whatever could have been pointing. And y'all thinking it's right there, but it could have been outside of there. You know what I'm saying? Or let's be real. They built they built these uh, apartments on top of the land. Maybe she was killed way prior before. And Could whoever be. built built the land Maybe it's just, already found the gold. I don't know, child. It just nothing makes sense to me. It doesn't, man. Nothing but, makes sense. I'm and just was, like. This the 1800s? Come so on. much. Like, what the world? You know, a lot of people so said that. So much stuff, yeah. like. What was going on? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't, what was I, happening? Stuff still happens to this day. Though. I know, I know. And it's still scary though. It's crazy. Yeah, but hey, man, y'all spam us up. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts about it in the Please comment do. section down below. This was a wild one, man. Yeah. But it's always. I do go by the name DJ Kiki. This is we are we are.